The skeletal system of a rat. We're going to divide the skeletal system into two main parts. The axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. We're going to start with the axial skeleton. The axial skeleton is divided into three parts. The skull, the vertebral column, and the sternum and ribs. The skull. Let's talk about the locations of different bones. The premaxilla. The maxilla. The mandible. The occipital. Now we know the location of different bones, let's discuss the location of teeth. Those are the molars. The large sharp teeth are the incisor teeth. The vertebral column. Stop! Just let me blab for a second. Organisms living in aquatic environments, body weight is supported by water. In terrestrial environments, the vertebral column must support the body and transfer the weight of the body to the girdles and appendages. The structure of a building is kind of like the spines to our body. Now we understand how important the vertebral column actually is. Vertebrae are divided up into five different groups. Cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and caudal. Most mammals have seven cervical neck vertebrae. The reason why mammals can move their head in a yes or no nodding direction is thanks to the first two cervical vertebrae. The first cervical vertebrae is the atlas. Movement at this joint produces vertical movement of the head, the yes or nodding motion. The second vertebrae is the axis. Movement of the joint between the atlas and the axis produces rotational movement of the head. Like shaking your head no. Remember, atlas equals yes, axis equals no. Thoracic vertebrae bear ribs. Lumbar vertebrae do not. The sacrum is formed by the fusion of sacral vertebrae. Caudal vertebrae is all in the tail. Rats have 7 cervical vertebrae, 13 thoracic vertebrae, 6 lumbar vertebrae, a sacrum, and 20 caudal vertebrae. So now that we are experts on the skull and vertebral column, now it's time to learn about the sternum and ribs of a rat. The sternum and ribs protect thoracic organs and help with ventilation of lungs. All ribs attach dorsally to the thoracic vertebrae and curve ventrally. Another word for the sternum is the manubrium. There are three types of ribs in the rat. The true ribs are highlighted red. A rat has seven pairs, and true ribs are directly attached to the sternum. False ribs are highlighted green, and they are attached to the rib anterior to themselves. A rat has three pairs of false ribs. Floating ribs are highlighted purple, and they have no ventral attachment, thus floating ribs. A rat has three pairs of these ribs. Also, a ziphoid process containing cartilage is attached to the ziphosternum. And that is everything you'll need to know about the axial skeleton. Now it's time to talk about the appendicular skeleton. The appendicular skeleton is divided into two parts. The pectoral girdle and appendages. The pelvic girdle and appendages. The pectoral girdle consists of scalpuli and clavicles. Scalpuli clavicle bones of the pectoral limb humerus radius which is more anterior than the ulna which is more posterior for the pectoral feet just remember cmp ranking from most posterior to most anterior carpals metacarpals and phalanges the pelvic girdle consists of three bones fused together by the sacrum, which we can recall that the sacrum is made by fused sacral vertebrae. Anyways, let's begin to locate the bones that make up the pelvic appendages. Femur, the tibia, which is more anterior, fibula, which is more posterior. For pelvic feet, 
I just remember TMP, ranging from most posterior to most anterior. Tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges. There you have it. Now you're an expert on the rat skeletal system.